In this session, we will go through the execution of the actual costing run. First of all, what are the prerequisites to the actual costing run? First, variances have to be collected in the relevant price difference accounts. Then, inventory period closing transaction MMPV has to be run to open the new period. Also, actual activity prices have to be calculated for the period. At the time of the actual costing run, make sure no modifications to the material master are occurring at the same time. The actual costing run is a cockpit that has several steps in it. As you can see, there's selection, determined sequence, single level price determination, multi-level price determination, revaluation of consumption, post-closing, and mark material prices. I will take you through each of these steps in the subsequent slides. These steps should be executed in sequence. Selection and sequence determination. This is done by the system to determine which preceding materials flow into successive materials. Remember, material ledger is all about transferring variances from one material either to a subsequent material or back into itself. Single level price determination. These are variances that occur in a material from its direct procurement. They are collected in the price, exchange rate, and revaluation accounts, and they are proportionally assigned to ending inventory. Think of single level price determination as a variance that occurs in a material and does not need to be transferred anywhere else. Multi-level price determination. This allocates variances from lower level to higher level products. It is based on the actual quantity structure, meaning how much of the lower product was actually used to create the higher product. Cost center variances and transfers between materials are also treated as multi-level variances. Think of multi-level variances as variances which transfer from a lower level material, for example, a raw material, to a higher level material, for example, a fin semi-finished product, based on how much of the raw material was transferred to the semi-finished product. Revaluation of consumption. This functionality allows you to evaluate goods issues such as cost of sales, consumption to a cost center, or issues to scrap. The price variance from the receipts of the product is proportionally transferred to the consumption object. For example, a cost center or a cost of sales account. Think of revaluation of consumption as a situation where a material is consumed, but it is not consumed into another material, so the variance for the original material does not go into another material. Instead, it goes to a non-material object, such as a cost of sales account, consumption to a cost center, or a scrap account. WIP revaluation. WIP revaluation is another way of transferring the variances of a material to an account which is not necessarily inventory related. In order to set this up, go to transaction OMXW and select the WIP active checkbox for the relevant plant. This opens up another step in the costing run which is shown here. When this step is executed, any variances for a product on an, on an incomplete production or process order are transferred proportionally to the WIP account. So we've talked about single level, multi-level, revaluation of consumption, and the WIP revaluation. Quite simply, think of it as different ways of transferring the variance of a material to something else or back to itself. 
Post-closing. You have two options in the post-closing step of a material ledger. One is to evaluate, and the other is not to evaluate. Now let's see the differences between the two. If you evaluate, you need to select the box called Revaluate Material. If you don't revaluate, you do not select this box, and the material is not revaluated. If you revaluate, the price control of the closed period switches to V. If you don't revaluate, the price control remains as S. If you revaluate, the variances of that product are rolled into inventory accounts, which are configured in transaction key BSX. If you don't revaluate, the variances are rolled to accrual accounts, which are configured in transaction key LKW. Whether you revaluate or not, you can reverse the closing entries that have been posted. Mark material prices. The periodic unit price, which is also the, known as the actual cost of the material, can be marked as a standard price for the subsequent period. Now remember, since material ledger will most likely be run after the per current period transactions have already been made, this marking is done for the next period. So here's an example. If you run material ledger for the month of November, you are most likely going to be running it in December. However, in December, material movements will already have been made, so it will be too late to use the standard cost as the material ledger price. Therefore, the earliest you can mark the November material ledger cost is in December. When you mark material price, it inserts the actual cost in the future plan price field in the accounting one view of the material master. Thank you.